Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, JAMF's Introduction to Centralized Apple TV Management. My name is Jen Kaplan. I'm a Product Marketing Manager for JAMF, and I will be your host for today. Let's take a look at our agenda and what we'll be discussing this afternoon. For those who are new on the call, today we'll begin with a quick overview of who JAMF is and what we do. We'll discuss a few industry trends that are driving the need for new centralized Apple TV management capabilities, and we'll walk through a few new tvOS 10.2 features that provide more management ability than previously possible, as well as walk through some of the Apple TV experience you can create with these features. Then we'll save some time at the end for questions. If you have questions throughout the WebEx, feel free to enter them into the Q&A area or the chat box of the webinar panel, and we'll answer as many as we can at the end. Let's kick things off for those who are new with a brief overview of Jamf. So for those who aren't familiar, Jamf is all about helping organizations succeed with Apple. We've been focused on Apple device management for 15 years, and we embrace the native Apple technology experience consumers have come to know and love. We've offered zero-day support for all new Apple releases for over a decade, supporting new versions and features of new operating systems better and faster than anyone. Our two core products are Jamf Now and Jamf Pro. Jamf Now offers simple, on-demand mobile device management for organizations without IT expertise, and Jamf Pro is complete life cycle, manage life cycle management for organizations of all sizes. With a focus on end-user empowerment, Jamf Pro automates common IT tasks and gives users the ability to set up and support their own devices. We focus on the areas of zero-touch deployment, robust device configuration, app management, inventory, security, and for end-user empowerment, the ability to offer a self-service app catalog for end-users. That's why more than 10,000 organizations choose Jamf to manage their Apple devices, Macs, iPhones, iPads, and now Apple TV devices. From 15 of the top 25 Fortune 500 companies to more than 4,000 schools worldwide, Jamf serves a diverse and broad range of industries. And that's why we're uniquely positioned to share some very interesting industry trends related to Apple TV. So while our customers have been using Jamf Pro for very lightweight Apple TV management for some time now, we wanted to get some feedback, stories, and use cases about how businesses and schools are using Apple TV devices today to transform their organizations. So we ran a survey on Jamf Nation, which is our online Apple administrator community, over January and February of this year. And nearly a 1,000 of you responded from around the globe with your Apple TV stories. And the results are very interesting. For starters, 97% of organizations reported having Apple TV devices in their environment. We were really surprised at the prevalence of Apple TV across these organizations because until recently, the primary use case for Apple TV in the enterprise and education was really alongside AirPlay and the ability to use AirPlay to display content wirelessly from iOS devices and Macs. And it's not just organizations with one or two Apple TV devices in their environment. It's 35% of organizations having more than 50 plus Apple TV devices in their environment. And 14% of them said they have between 100 and 500 devices in their environment. So these are very sizable deployments of Apple TV. And Apple TV is incredibly popular in both the enterprise and education, which made up about a 50-50 split of those who responded to this survey. So it got us thinking about why. Well, the number one reason we heard in the survey is the cost savings that Apple TV brings to the world of wireless display. The cost of an Apple TV is just a fraction of what organizations used to pay for projector and replacement bulbs or expensive conference room Crestron style systems, and AirPlay for Apple TV extends that cost savings, eliminating the need for constant replacement cords and adapters and, and other tools that are used for conference room display. 
And even more fascinating are the use cases that we heard from many of you around Apple TV. Apple TV is used in the enterprise as digital signage to welcome visitors in a lobby, and they can deliver a cost-efficient wireless display solution for conference rooms, like we were just covering. Hospitals can continue to transform the bedside experience by delivering entertainment apps or patient education information to in-room iPad and Apple TV devices. Hotels can provide digital branded onboarding experiences for new guests. They can offer wayfinding throughout their hotel or deploy an enterprise Apple TV app in rooms. And Apple TV gives teachers the freedom to move about the classroom and display educational content on an Apple TV with the simple command of their voice. In fact, one of the schools that responded to our survey said that the Apple TV has become as important as the pencil in the classroom. But organizations want to do so much more with Apple TV. They need the ability to scale. And regardless of Apple TV's popularity, deployment of Apple TV up until this point hasn't been that easy. The management of Apple TV devices has been a pretty manual process, time and labor intensive. Setting up new Apple TV devices or troubleshooting devices requires hands-on interaction from IT for each individual device. This one-to-one -one relationship eats up a lot of time, especially for those organizations with hundreds of Apple TV devices. And the ability to configure each Apple TV for its intended use case is also a one-to-one -one process. Making an enterprise rollout or a rollout district-wide at a school and inventorying all those devices, extremely manual. But even with the hours of setup and support, mass Apple TV rollouts are something organizations have already been doing. And we can't wait to see what people will do with the new centralized Apple TV management capabilities from Jamf. So back in March, Apple released tvOS 10.2, a brand new operating system for Apple TV. And for the very first time, Apple has extended many of the mobile device management, or MDM, capabilities that have been available for iPads and iPhones to Apple TV, including the ability to set up, configure, and distribute apps for Apple TV devices in bulk, the same way organizations do for iPhone, iPad, and Mac. This is a complete game changer for Apple TV. It's really the end of manual, time-consuming setup. Organizations are already deploying and configuring and leveraging Apple TV for a wealth of use cases. And here's what Apple has done to make it better and what has allowed Jamf to offer a fully centralized Apple TV management solution. From zero-touch setup and over-the-air configuration to enterprise app deployment, remote commands, and tvOS restrictions, you can save measurable time, money, and resources on your Apple TV deployment. So let's take a closer look at each of these new areas and walk through what's new from tvOS 10.2 and Apple and Jamf. Zero touch setup. With support for the device enrollment program, Apple TV has become Apple's simplest zero touch deployment experience of any Apple device. When you plug in a DEP enabled device, which would be a fourth generation Apple TV running tvOS 10.2, the Apple TV will automatically enroll and accept any configurations defined in Jamf Pro as soon as it powers on. You can now configure the setup assistant for Apple TV as well, determining which screens a user will see when powering on a device. And with the auto advance feature, you can automatically bypass all of the screens for a 60 second setup. This is great for IT departments that want to empower any end user to send up an Apple TV without requiring hands-on interaction from IT. And we'll show you a little bit of that 60 setup experience later in the webinar. Another huge win is through over-the-air configuration. With tvOS 10.2, you get a wealth of new capabilities to pre-configure one or more Apple TV devices for really any intended use case. Conference display mode is huge for anyone using AirPlay. In the past, IT manually set up AirPlay or left it on the home screen of each Apple TV device. With conference display mode, you get an awesome AirPlay experience right out of the box for any number of Apple TV devices. And with single app mode, you can take over an Apple TV screen to use as digital signage or media display and determine whether or not you want to allow end users to airplay over it. 
This is really great for spontaneous collaboration in the office, where employees can gather near an Apple TV displaying your company's logo and quickly airplay on top of the default screen to share or discuss content. We'll show you an example of this later in the webinar as well. You can also deploy Wi-Fi, certs, SCEP, or global HTTP proxy to one device or groups of devices from the comfort of your desk. You can even configure a device name for each Apple TV, which we heard was a really strong desire from those with uh, especially larger Apple TV deployments, making inventory faster and easier than ever. There are also robust restrictions available, allowing you to fully customize the Apple TV experience for any environment. For example, the ability to disable AirPlay. AirPlay is great for wirelessly displaying content, but if your Apple TV is used for digital signage and you need the ability to restrict an Apple TV from allowing devices to use AirPlay, this is a great restriction. When it's in place for Apple TV, it won't even show up in the list of available devices when attempting to AirPlay from an iOS device or Mac to the Apple TV. And for added security when using AirPlay, you can require a passcode upon first AirPlay pairing to enforce the use, of, the use of a passcode to connect that first time. And for end users with iOS devices using the remote app or iOS keyboard, you can also disable the ability to control an Apple TV using that remote app and prevent users from using their iOS keyboard to input text on the Apple TV. I see this as being very helpful, especially in the education space where you might have a troublemaker or two attempting to connect to an Apple TV mid-presentation. Now you have the ability to disable that AirPlay connection. And finally, enterprise app deployment for Apple TV. tvOS enterprise apps, or in-house apps, parallel enterprise apps on iOS. If you're developing any in-house apps today for iOS devices, this is the same process for tvOS. You can deploy these enterprise apps to Apple TV and configure them in that single app mode. You can even deploy multiple enterprise apps. I'll show an example of this in a moment, but it can easily be accomplished by any organization that wants to customize the Apple TV home screen for digital signage or wayfinding, or even just determining the default home screen in a conference room. You can do it all through a simple in-house app. In fact, if you have existing iOS in-house apps, think about creating a version of those for Apple TV. What experiences can you target to Apple TV that already exist today? When you think about it, the sky is really the limit. And now let's shift from configurations and settings that you can apply to Apple TV and talk about the actions that you can take with Apple TV through the use of brand new remote commands. Remote commands are great for organizations with Apple TV devices that might be mounted in a non-accessible place, like built into a wall or in some sort of display. You can send a remote command to restart an Apple TV device, or in the case of healthcare and hospitals or hospitality and hotel rooms, you can wipe and restart the device remotely for each new patient or guest coming in and out of your hospital or hotel without having to physically interact with the TV. Similar to MDM commands and how they're used for iOS devices, iPads, and iPhones, uh, these commands make it easier and faster to take action on one or more Apple TV devices at any time, really streamlining the troubleshooting process and saving all of the time that it used to take walking around manually to each Apple TV device. Also, for those with global or remote employees or multiple offices where they may not have an IT presence in every office, that this gives anyone in IT more abilities to manage Apple TV and control some of those remote troubleshooting activities than ever before. But that's not all. Uh, along with all of these new features for iOS 10.2, with the latest release of Jamf Pro, we added a little bit of icing on the cake with mass Apple TV to iOS device pairing. So we built this feature to solve a problem for organizations with large groups of Apple TV and iOS devices, such as hospitals. With new AirPlay permission settings enhancements, you can use device details like room number or floor, other inventory information, even customizable extension attributes to create a relationship between each Apple TV and an associated iOS device or associated iOS devices. 
Jamf customers can define this relationship in their global management settings. With one simple setting, you can define which Apple TV devices are available and display uh, for AirPlay uh, with each iOS device or groups of iOS devices. So there's a huge benefit for end users here since you're controlling what they can see and not bogging down their iOS devices with tons of different Apple TV options for them to connect. Each end user will only see the Apple TVs that you have defined and associated with their iOS devices. So one of the biggest use cases that we've seen again is in healthcare, but this can really work in education or any organizations with Apple TVs in multiple conference rooms, floors, buildings, um, anywhere you have a lot of Apple TV devices within um, a close range. There are so many opportunities to think about how to use this functionality to solve that problem, both uh, to help the end user and create a end, better end user experience and also to make IT's life a little bit easier. So now we walked through some of the new capabilities that are available in terms of Apple TV management from uh, Apple and the release of tvOS 10.2. And so what I'll do now is walk you through um, how some of these new features apply to Apple TV and, and what is that Apple TV experience that um, end users and anyone in IT, whoever's interacting with the Apple TV, will have as uh, these configuration profiles are applied or these restrictions or these remote commands are, are being sent. So this is an example here. We have our Apple TV device that we've connected to Ethernet and power. Uh, remember, this needs to be a fourth generation DEP eligible device. Um, as the device turns on, you can see a brief period here where the end user has the option of pairing a Siri remote. Um, and after about 30 or so seconds, um, the Apple TV will automatically proceed through the setup screens and quickly enroll into Jamf Pro using that automated advanced setup feature. Uh, this makes it so that the Apple TV will automatically inherit any configurations or uh, customizations that have been defined in Jamf Pro uh, and automatically uh, display and, and be customized for that end user experience based on what you've defined upon the first time it's opened up and powered on. So this is an example of an Apple TV device that we've enrolled in Jamf Pro. It's automatically run through the setup process after we plugged it into Ethernet and power. And now let's walk through the process of applying a configuration profile for conference display mode. So as you can see here, um, we've applied this new configuration profile. So if this Apple TV device were in a conference room uh, and I am in the conference room having a meeting, I can see that um, if I want to airplay, here's my very clear and easy instructions that uh, Jamf has named this Apple TV simply Apple TV. You're able to customize the name of the Apple TV. And then one of my favorite features is in the lower right-hand corner, you can see a message that says visit Jamf.com to learn more, uh, IT has the ability to customize this message. So really giving the end user all of the instructions they need to not only set up, but then connect at any time using AirPlay for a really elegant wireless display solution uh, for them to present their iOS content. Now I'll remove the configuration profile. Here we are back to kind of the default home screen. And then next, I'll add another configuration profile uh, for single app mode. And what I've done here is deployed an enterprise app. Um, one of our product managers here at Jamf created his first enterprise app, which is just a simple logo. And he built it in Xcode. And you can actually upload your enterprise app directly into Jamf Pro and then use this configuration profile to put your Apple TV device or groups of Apple TV devices in single app mode. So, you know, sometimes I think the, the term enterprise app deployment can be a little bit intimidating, but um, you can use it for a very simple and easy use case, like just displaying a branded logo or an image, or even if you have an image that's a list of upcoming events or um, directions, if you're using it for wayfinding. A um, lot of different ways that you can deploy out enterprise apps using this single app mode. 
And what's really great is depending on your use case, you can allow uh, your end users to airplay on top of the enterprise app in single app mode. For This is really great, again, in those kind of collaborative spaces where you'd like to have a nice branded image on your Apple TV display, but you also want the ability for anyone at your organization to quickly and easily be able to um, share content from their iOS device or Mac on top of uh, your default enterprise app in single app mode. And then while you are able to enable the ability for end users to airplay on top of single app mode, you can also put a configuration profile restriction in place <clears throat> excuse me, to disable uh, the ability to airplay on top of your enterprise app. And this is great, again, as well for organizations that are using Apple TV devices for digital signage simply to display content that aren't going to be used for any sort of two-way interaction. This is a really great opportunity for you to disable that ability to use that airplay functionality. And now we see a restart of our Apple TV device. Um, that was really quick. Uh, with the new remote command, you have the ability to easily send out uh, a command to one device or multiple devices uh, for them to restart. It can sometimes take a couple seconds, but um, it's a really quick and easy end user experience. And then the other really exciting new remote command that IT can now push out to Apple de TV devices is the ability to do a restart, um, which is really great, especially as uh, organizations like K through 12 schools are heading into the summer, they may want to do a restart of their devices um, or maybe before entering the school year in the fall. Here you can see an example. I've sent a remote command to my Apple TV device, and it's going through the restart process. So um, the ability to wipe and reboot an Apple TV remotely and re erase its content um, anytime, anywhere, uh, really is, again, that, that great time and cost savings for anyone, especially those with large enterprise Apple TV deployments. So that was a little preview of um, kind of that Apple TV experience with the new tvOS 10.2 capabilities from Apple and Jamf Pro. So to recap, with uh, tvOS 10.2 and Jamf Pro's centralized Apple TV management solution, you can really unlock new device management capabilities for a Apple TV, including zero-touch setup with Apple's device enrollment program, configuration profiles and enterprise app distribution, MDM commands to wipe and restart Apple TV, and AirPlay permissions enhancements that make the mass pairing of Apple TV devices to iOS devices for content display a breeze. From enabling seamless wireless presentations to remote management of digital signage in lobbies or common areas, Jamf Pro and Apple TV management um, and tvOS 10.2 really kind of do it all. I wanted to call out a few resources that are available to everyone on today's call or watching this recording. Uh, if you were in today's webinar and you have more questions about Apple TV device management or um, any Apple device management question related to iPhone, iPad, Mac, uh, contact us at jamf.com to get started. We're happy to answer questions at any time. If you're a Jamf customer, you can also contact your customer support specialist. Today's webinar will be recorded and posted so that you can view it again on demand or share it uh, on jamf.com. Uh, we post all of our webinars, so any topic uh, that's of interest to you or anyone at your organization, uh, you may find it on this page. And if there's a topic that you want to see covered in a future webinar, simply let us know. Um, again, you can contact us on jamf.com, reach out to your customer support specialist. Um, we love to get feedback on the content of the these webinars. 
We also encourage you to join the conversation on Jamf Nation, our online Apple administrator community. Jamf Nation is great. It, you can interact with more than 45,000 Apple administrators, everything from uh, troubleshooting common issues to brainstorming different use cases. Um, it's where Jamf Pro customers go to submit feature requests. Um, a lot of great information here available on Jamf Nation. So, uh, for example, for those of you who have questions on how to develop those enterprise apps or in-house apps, Jamf Nation is a really great place to post that question and have a really lively discussion. Um, Apple also has a wealth of resources on their website as well related to tvOS app development. And if you prefer in-person interaction live, uh, consider joining us at JNUC 2017. It is the largest gathering of Apple administrators around the world. And JNUC is really the ideal venue to solve some of the most um, impactful problems at your organization related to IT, device management. You'll get ideas that can help you take your investment in Jamf and Apple to a whole new level. Uh, you'll get to learn about future and new Jamf Pro features to empower your end users and make your life a little bit easier. Uh, you can share real life experiences, gain unexpected unexpected insights and connect with your Jamf Nation peers face to face. Um, and my favorite is uh, meeting and mingling with Jamf product implementation, at implementation and support experts. Uh, I love meeting customers myself and so do a lot of us here at Jamf. So uh, whether you're a new or experienced Jamf Pro user, you'll walk away from JNUC with a pep in your step and a contact list full of new names and lots of actionable knowledge to help you and your organization work a little bit smarter. So check out um, Jamf Nation User Conference 2017. It's this October in Minneapolis. Hopefully I'll see many of you there. And thank you again for joining us for today's webinar.